In this lesson, we'll take a look at applications of the dot product. And the first one is uh, is to use the dot product to find the angle between two vectors. And specifically, the two vectors are drawn so that they're tail to tail like this. That's the angle between them, not as though they were drawn head to tail like when you're adding them. Now, from the dot product definition, if we take the uh, dot product definition and divide both sides by the product of uh, the magnitudes of A and B, then they divide out on the left here and that's how we isolate cos theta. So cos theta is just a dot b over the product of the two magnitudes. So this is a rearranged cos um, dot product formula, uh, just solve for cos theta. And so normally if we have the components of the vectors, we could easily calculate the dot product and the two magnitudes and then find the angle. And we'll do that in the example on the, the next page. We're asked to calculate angle RST if these are the vertices of the triangle. So we'll plot the negative two zero point, that would be R right here. Uh, one four, of course, would be right there. And uh, seven two would be right here. And we'll draw in the triangle. And so there's our uh, triangle RST. Now we're asked to find angle RST. So we're asked to find the angle right here at vertice S. So I'm going to put a theta there. Now in order to find that, we need to uh, create two vectors that make that angle. So the vectors would be SR and ST. And so SR is the vector that goes 3 to the left and 1, 2, 3, 4 down. So it would have components uh, negative 3, negative 4. You, of course, also can uh, subtract the components. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. And we'll do the same thing for a vector st. It goes uh, to the right 6 and down 2, so it's the vector 6, negative 2. So this is the formula from the previous page. Uh, our vectors are sr and st, so in place of a and b we'll put those vectors, otherwise it's the same formula. So we need on the numerator to calculate the dot product. So negative 3 times 6 plus negative 4 times negative 2. And so negative 18 plus 8 is negative 10. That's the dot product. That's what will go in the numerator here. Now, the, we need the magnitudes of the two vectors. So the root of negative 3 squared plus negative 4 squared, that's 9, and that's 16. And that adds to 25, and the root of 25 is 5. For st, it's the root of 6 squared plus negative 2 squared. That's 36 plus 4 is 40, so that's the root of 40. I'll just leave it as the root of 40. It's not a perfect square like 25 was. So substituting all the values in, uh, the dot product was negative 10, and then uh, the two um, magnitudes are 5 and the root of 40, so 5 times root 40. Now if you divide negative 10 by 5 root 40, you get this decimal, negative 0.316, etc. And so, so then to find the angle, we take the inverse cosine of that amount, and we'll get the angle to be about 108 degrees. And it certainly does look, that looks reasonable, it looks like it is a little bit more than uh, a right angle. So angle RST is 108 degrees. Now projections, that's the other part of this uh, video lesson. The, um, so think of the light source uh, coming straight down here and we have this vector and so its projection, and I'll define it mathematically in the next page, um, its projection is really uh, the shadow on the table. If we draw a perpendicular here and a perpendicular here, that pink vector like think of it as a shadow, is the projection of this red vector onto the table. So more mathematically defined on this page, so we've got this vector A and vector B. So A is actually the vector OA, I could refer to it as A or OA, and uh, this B is the vector OB. Now, so they can be any two vectors. The vector we're projecting onto cannot be the zero vector. That's why this last statement is here, or next statement is here. So, and they form some angle theta. So, in order to find the projection, we drop a perpendicular from the head of A down to B, and we'll call that the point N. Now, <clears throat> the projection of A onto B is the vector from O to N. So, that's actually the vector projection of A onto B. Now, let's first of all find out how long O N is. Remember the vertical bars means magnitude. And so the uh, length of O N or magnitude of O N is you could think of it as a component. Uh, it's um, and although this isn't horizontal in this triangle you could think of that as the horizontal component of vector A. 
So it would be the length of A times the cos of the angle. Now, we do not normally know what the angle is between the vectors, especially if we have them in component form. So although this is true, it's not a necessarily usable formula. So we're going to continue this uh, development here. Now, <clears throat> remember from the uh, previous pages, the cosine of theta is a dot b over magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. So we're going to substitute this in place of cos theta here. Now, notice that these magnitudes of a will divide out. And so the length of the vector, not, not the vector, but how long it is, is actually just the dot product divided by the length of vector b, the one you're projecting onto. So that's the length of on. Not the actual projection yet, just how long it is. Now, the, uh, the length of on is it's some multiple or fraction of the uh, length of vector b. And so multiple also includes smaller than, so um, it doesn't have to be larger. Uh, on in the way as is drawn here is certainly shorter than b, so it could be a half of b or three-fifths of b or something like that. So this uh, this would have to be true there. They have to be multiples of one another. Now, <clears throat> so I'm going to equate k times the magnitude of b to what on was equal to down here. So notice we have length of on equals this, length of on equals this. So k times the magnitude of b should equal this quantity, and that's what that statement is there. Now, if we divide both sides by the magnitude of b, so this is what I'm actually doing here now, then these divide out. Now, when you divide, it's the same as multiplying the denominator by another magnitude of b here, so this ends up being squared because there's another magnitude of b in the denominator. And so, the constant k, that's how we actually isolate and find k, is it's the, main, the uh, dot product of a and b divided by the length of b squared. Now, um, not only is this true for the magnitudes, but it's also true for the vectors as well. The actual vector o n is some multiple of vector b. And the multiple it is, and that's why we found k here, is this, this is the multiple it is. So we can substitute this in place of k. And so, uh, the projection of a onto b, or the vector o n, is a dot b over the length of b squared times vector b. So this times vector b is what actually gives it the direction, so it's in the proper direction. And this is actually just the, uh, the fraction of b that that vector is. So that's the vector projection formula. Now there's two ways to write this. Uh, some people like to write, and I'll write this below, since the um, magnitude of b squared is equal to b dot b, some people like to write this formula like this. And that is exactly the same formula. So it really doesn't matter whether you uh, say magnitude of b squared in the denominator or b dot b, that is the same thing. And of course that's the uh, diagram from the previous page. So that's the vector projection formula. And in an example here we're going to use it uh, just to show how it works. And so we have vector c and vector f, we're projecting c onto f. And so uh, the first thing we need to do is find the dot product. So we go negative 3 times 5 plus 4 times 1. And negative 15 plus 4 is negative 11. So that's the dot product. Now we also need the magnitude of f, or if you're using the other version, uh, take f and take the dot product with the same vector. So the magnitude of f is it's the root of 5 squared plus 1 squared. And so that's 25 plus 1 is 26, so that's the root of 26. Now, that's the magnitude of f, of course, we're squaring it here. And so uh, when you square that, of course, uh, that just gets rid of the root, and so we'll have a 26 in the uh, denominator here. So substituting in the values, c dot f was negative 11. The magnitude of f squared would be 26 times vector f. That's what gives it the correct direction. So here's the 5, 1 vector here. 
And so we just multiply the negative 1126 by 5 and by 1, by both components. So negative 11 times 5 is 55 over 26, and negative 11 times 1 is negative 11, of course, over 26. So that's the uh, vector in, um, in fractional form. If you want to change it to decimal so it's uh, more easy to plot in a grid, you certainly can. Now this is what it looks like. That's what the graph's down here for. F is the vector 5, 1, and C is the vector negative 3, 4. So there's C. If we're project projecting C onto F, you drop the perpendicular down here, looks like this, and then there's the projection vector. And of course, negative 2.12, so the x coordinates just past negative 2, and about negative 0.42 down, so those, uh, that certainly does agree with the components I have over here.